the moment I saw a LinkedIn post from our guest today, I knew that I wanted to have her on the Map It Marketing podcast because she was talking about something that I immediately thought yes to. She was talking about having an idea or a concept around the peaceful pipeline. Now, the reason this was especially important for me to hear from her is I knew that this guest had had a very, very bad 2023. In fact, what she's gone through this year, really not many of us will have experienced and those who have would know just how traumatic it would have been. And yet through it all, she discovered that the core thing that she had missing from her business was a constant pipeline to help her business grow better. And so she created a model from it, calling it the Peaceful Pipeline. I'm really excited to have with you today, Kat Corbett. She's been a freelancer and a consultant and an agency owner, and she's worked in a whole range of different things in marketing from radio and PR to digital advertising. She started a copywriting agency three years ago and knew she needed to have a consistent flow of clients to be viable. So she learned how to make that even though she had a very small audience and a really introverted personality. So one of the biggest lessons from that was realizing that when you're close to what you're doing, it's really hard to work out what your true value is. And so one of the things that she's been working on is creating a messaging that you she could use with clients, working with them one-on-one to help them identify and express the true value that they create to their ideal clients and then give them a process, the peaceful pipeline process to take clients through a framework that helps them build confidence and transforms how they show up in their marketing. This was such an alignment for me and the way that I believe that we should look after our business owners when we're working with them. So I had to have it on Map It Marketing. So let's get started and learn all about the peaceful pipeline and what Kat says we need to do with our marketing. Welcome, this is Map It Marketing and I am your host, Rachel Claver. I love helping small business owners become more confident and more capable with their marketing. So this podcast is all here to help you do just that. It's me and the help of some great guests helping you learn new skills, new strategies and ideas. Let's jump in and get started. Hello and welcome to the Map It Marketing Podcast. I am your host, Rachel Claver, which hopefully you worked out in the introduction. And I'm really excited today because our guest is Kat Corbett. She's a messaging strategist from Auckland. And I have um, fallen in a bit of LinkedIn love with her because everything she says is stuff I 100% agree with, which always means I want to have her on the show. I'm going to get her to introduce herself in a moment. She's got an amazing story, which is actually fairly tragic, uh, but is also really powerful and one that I think a lot of us need to hear in terms of what she's worked through in terms of how to market your business better through her own unfortunate events, like a lemony snicket novel. Um, But before um, we jump into that, just a little reminder that if you are wanting to have help with content strategy and wanting a bit of a boost for your business as a service-based business owner in New Zealand, do come along to one of my free content marketing workshops across New Zealand. There's also one online. Yes, there is currently not one in Auckland. There may not be one for 2024, But it's okay. There are other places. And people travel, guys. Fly to me. Fly around. It'll be worth it, I promise. People do, and they love it. All right, without further ado, um, let's talk to Kat. Now, Kat, um, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Rachel. I've been a LinkedIn fangirl of yours for years Oh, well. well. It's mutual. It's mutual. It's (laughs) so good. Um, And tell us a little bit about you. So you're a messaging strategist. Uh, What does that mean for a start? Yeah, so essentially what I do is I help my clients get really clear and really confident around the messaging that they're putting out into the world for their business. And there's I'll quick there's a three step process. There's three things you need to do. The first thing is you need to distill. That is distill who it is that you want to attract, your ideal client. What is the problem, the exact problem you solve for them? Then you need to transform and it's transformation. And this is um, what makes you stand out? There is a lot of competition. Um, and there's two pieces that I look at, and that is creating a unique process that is yours. And the second one is developing a distinct point of view. Oh, I like that one. Mm. And, and yeah, I, mm. yeah I, can I just I say this? Because I saw a really cool post with someone, because I, um, I had a run-in with another marketing coach about a couple of months ago, because they were they said something that they said would be, like a controversial opinion and it was very controversial for me. I really did not like it and had to pull myself back and had to go to my coaching group people and say, 
banned me from LinkedIn. I can't talk to this person. And they're like, well, you really went in there to you. This is not like you. I was like, yes, I did. But like one of the things I think with that that point of view is you can't, you shouldn't be controversial for the sake of being controversial, should you? Like when we're talking about that, you're saying develop like a really clear worldview or point of view that you can stand your life on, but isn't controversial for the sake of controversiality. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I've got a bit of a um, philosophy with any social media, particularly LinkedIn, because that's where mm. I like to live. Me too. It's about being relentlessly positive on there yeah. and building I think people so too. up. Yeah. yeah. It's not a tear down fest. We get enough it's hard yeah. enough putting yourself out there. You don't need yeah. someone to rip you down and make you feel awful. Yes, I really like that. And I agree with you. You don't want to hang out with people. You don't want to attract clients like that either, do you? If you're putting down everyone else in your industry, yep. you don't want to be attracting people who are attracted to that because they're going to be problematic clients. Oh, absolutely. And you don't, yeah, it's it's not a cool vibe. So for, for example, my point of view is um, you don't need a huge audience or a big personality yeah, to be like successful that. online because you're going to have a whole lot of people like going, but on their walks right now going, oh, Kat, I love you so much right now. <laughs> oh, well, I just, it, I feel all these people because I am one. I'm a hella introvert, like, and I, I find it really difficult putting myself out there. Like, I'm a market, I have to do it. It's my bread and butter. Yeah. But yeah. mate. It, <laughs> it's hard, right? Like, yeah. I think, you know, I, I have an extrovert, introvert side where I can public face extrovert. And I was interesting, I did this uh, podcast a few weeks ago uh, or came out a few weeks ago with um, EJ John from Sisterhood of Style and she wears really loud clothing and I said oh you're the same in the weekend she goes yeah it's completely the same and I went it's really interesting to me because I definitely have an at work wardrobe and a home one and she said oh it should be the same and I was like no because that's the two sides of my personality I've got that public figure where a lot of wear brights and lots of fit patterns and stuff like that and then at home I'm often in neutrals and stuff because I want to have that I'm hiding away from the world today I'm not talking, and I thought it's really interesting how we often have to have a little bit of more when we're public. It's so interesting. I just go black. Yeah, I, I think that's good. And, but you've been doing lots of video recently, which has mm. been really great. Yeah. And that's visibility, right? And I bet that's pushing against some comfort buttons Ooh, for you. Big so much. But, you know, my theory with video is, and especially with the whole chat DB, chat GPT um, yeah. thing is, People get to know your nuance and yeah, and, they do, and like and micro quirks. expressions. Yeah, and what you might be like to work with on a Zoom yes. call, right? Yes, I think so too. Now I'm just double checking. So you said distill problem and transform, or is it distill transform and no, one? So it's distill, it's distillation, yes. transformation, and the third yeah. one is illumination. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, and this is where me and you probably play in the same, or definitely play in the same space, but it's about your content that you're putting out, you know, yeah. the compelling messaging. Um, how do you actually convey what it is you want to say? How do you convey your unique point of view, um, the problem that you solve without being business centric? Yeah, I love that. And I, it's really interesting because I was. You know, obviously we've mentioned ChatGPT. One of the things that I hear a lot of people in our industry say is they freak out about how ChatGPT is going to take our businesses and how it's going to affect us. But I have realized I've worked with six clients in strategy, from a strategy perspective this week and all of them we've used ChatGPT in the sessions. It's just part of what we do. But in every single one of them, they've all mentioned just organically, I could not have used ChatGPT without the strategy work we've done together, the messaging work we've done together, and understand why it fits on or how it works in and how to identify my voice, they can't use it without that. They know that that's the missing ingredient. And they've said, I couldn't have done that without having a strategist or a coach to do that with me. And so our job is really, has become even more vitally important with the advent of AI, I think. And I'm not just saying that because everyone's going, oh gosh, but I think it's true. Like, I love that so many people are using it in a bad way because it just makes it easier for us to rise to the top. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. No, for sure. And and that whole, um, the reason I pivoted was because of that. Yeah, which is great. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk into about the pivot in a minute, but can we talk a little bit about what happened to you earlier this year? Because one of the other reasons you've pivoted is you've realized that we need to have marketing, not on autopilot, but have something that's helping just get that consistent flow and building that list and building those leads no matter what, yeah? Yes, absolutely. So so what happened to you this year that made that happen? Because like, I'm, I'm leading up to it, but it is fairly stressful, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been a life event, put it that way. Yeah. Um, so we got caught up in Cyclone Gabrielle on the 12th of February. It was a, a New Zealand's biggest storm, I think, on record. 
Uh, we live out on the west coast um, of Auckland in a small seaside coastal uh, town called Miruai. It's about, I think, 1,200 or 1,500 permanent residents. Uh, this was our, this our dream home. Um, and we, sit, we sort of nestled in the bottom of the cliff. And we kind of, on the night, we all, like my mum messaged me, she's a big boaty, and she said, just be careful, you're going to get um, the westerly sting. The, ta- the sting is going to come through on the westerly. And it was like 6 o'clock, and it was so calm. There was no wind. 7 o'clock came, 8 o'clock came, the wind started getting up. And at 10 o'clock, my husband and I were watching Netflix. And we thought, okay, let's just go go up to bed. And I had the boys upstairs with us. We've got two sons. They're 11 and 13. And their rooms are down at the bottom of the house, at the back of the house. And I was just like, I just don't have a good vibe about tonight. So I had the kids and the dogs were all upstairs, all six of us. And we, we walked into the bedroom and started getting ready to get into bed and my youngest son said what's that noise mum and I just said shh and we just heard this like unbelievable rumble yeah and yeah and trees just like cracking and it was this literally sound how horrifying it was horrifying and we heard the slide coming down and I just said it's a landslide just just run I was I used really colorful explicit language just run just run and yeah. so we all ran down the steps and my younger son froze. So I kind of had to carry him down the steps. Oh, and, yeah, you were, yeah. Oh, and as yeah. we were running down, the landslide was coming down with us about four meters away. Oh, my gosh. Around to, it was outside. It wasn't hitting the house, but it was yeah. right right by the house. So we ran down to the bottom of the steps. And then my husband stops and he goes, oh, my God, where's Subi? And she's our the deaf, no, deaf staffy. Oh, I've got a step. I've got I know you've got oh staffies. my gosh. Yeah, and he, you know, you love your staffy, and he was like, "Yeah, absolutely, they're my babies." Oh, babies! Yeah. And he's like, "I have to go and get her," and I was like, "Can't go and get her." What? <laughs> like, I was like, "This." It was a real moment. It's a choice, right? It yeah. was a choice, and he life re- choice. Oh yeah, it was huge. Anyway, mm. he started running up the steps again, and she stuck her little head round. She obviously sensed that we were all, you know, leaving, and she was there, so we grabbed her. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know this was part of the story. Now I'm going to cry. <laughs> Thanks, Kat. Like, oh my gosh, this is me. This yeah. is what we'd be like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank God you gnarly. saved her. We saved her. Yeah. And um, we had nowhere to evacuate in Midway. So we drove up the road to a friend on the other side and we just sat in the car, kind of shaking, listening to what we thought was thunder, but turns out was actually the land just coming down. Like, we had five massive, massive landslides. And so we evacuated to the surf club. It was all very harrowing and traumatic. And Oh, it would have been. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the next day, I mean, we left. We were in, like, I mean, you know, I was barefoot and braless for oh, yeah. literally 24 hours. It's the worst. I think that has to be one of the worst things about it is, like, you know, people always say things like, have a grab bag. When, like, even if you have the grab bag, because I, 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 like, I, I've lived in Canterbury. I lived in Taiwan, and one of the things they said in Taiwan was, because I've had massive earthquakes, you have to have a grab bag. Never go to the but never go to bed without your clo- without any clothes on, you know, because it could something could happen. But when it's actually when those things are actually happening, to try and remember to bring a grab bag, like even if you'd had one, yeah, no. Well, you know, the funny thing is, I did have one. Ah, there we go. It was so a there we very go. bad one. It had yeah. nothing in it for me. I think I had a, a change of clothes for the boys because they were in yeah. their boxes, and nothing for my husband. It was an awful grab bag. Like, it was <laughs> terrible, but it was there. Um, a yeah, miracle. That's was, amazing for them. Good yeah, for them. Good for nice them. Nice for you with your bare feet and your and, and yeah. a bra. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was, that was me for t- rolling for 24 yeah. hours. Um, but it was pretty unreal. And so, and we haven't, we couldn't go back to our home. So that's been four months. We've kind of been back um, to grab some stuff and secure the house and do that sort of stuff. But now we just sit in limbo and we're waiting for government and we're waiting for insurance and council. It's huge. Mm. And, and I think too, mm. like, that's a, like, obviously that's a hugely traumatic or big thing, but it is a real reminder. Like, I look at that for anything that happens that causes an interruption in our business. And they can be really little things. They can be things we've chosen. Like last year I chose to have surgery and I was like cho- choosing to change stuff in my life. So that's a positive thing. But I couldn't market during that time and so when you have like something that's planned or unplanned that takes you out of that space you don't always notice it right away because you're in that flux of all this other stuff happening but did you really did it something make you realize at some point you go wow I've got all this other shit going on that's really awful 
but also what the hell's happening with my business now? I've got my head thinking. Is that kind of what happened to you? Oh, 100%. My brain left the building. Yeah, what a... Um, there was so much trauma. So my husband's also self-employed. We actually yeah. couldn't mentally work for a oh, month. No, I can't imagine you would have been able to. No. And especially doing deep work like copywriting. Yes. Um, I was very fortunate. I have a, just the most amazing team. They're freelancers and they're just incredible women. And they stepped in and they just, they carried the load that was there. That's amazing. It was amazing. But I, um, but I didn't mark it. I couldn't, I couldn't mm. face the world. I, I did some stuff on LinkedIn, but that was actually emotional processing. Yeah. That's what I was doing. It would have been. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I just wanted to you write. Did. With that though, I thought it was quite interesting because um, I obviously read them all and one of the things I found was really interesting is you would write it, but I, and I'd feel that I'd feel I'd feel like an emotional connection to it, but I didn't feel a, um, tr oh, what's the word, like a, I didn't feel like you were pulling on me. And it's one of the things I'll often say to people when you're, when you're writing about tragedy or writing about bad stuff, you need to write it in a way that doesn't mean that when people come and talk to you about it in the comments that it's pushing on a bruise. And so I think you wrote that, like obviously that's what you do. Um, but I think, you know, like when you're, when you are processing, you have to write, but then eliminate the bruise part that you know that if someone comments on it, it's going to make you feel worse and it's it's a gift that you can do it but it's also a real reminder that we can talk about these things as we're processing but we also need to make sure that we're not creating something that actually creates more pain for us as we do it exactly does that make sense totally and also um you don't want to do it for the sake of just being dramatic yes yeah and yeah because people pick up on it and then you go oh you know well thanks for making fun of my my, my tragedy experience and my tragedy <laughs> but actually there's probably a little bit of relevance and truth there you know yeah. like I remember seeing someone who got absolutely reamed on LinkedIn about a year or so ago because he had to let someone down but he'd taken a selfie of himself oh, cr the crying uh, CEO yes, do you remember it yeah yes. the crying CEO yeah yes and like he just got completely reamed about it and I'm like the, the, the validity of it is is that I might have also maybe if I'm having a tragic thing I do often think I'm documenting this and I can see how it can immediately go oh wow like wow, you were in the midst of, you're saying you were feeling it, but you managed to document it. I could actually understand both sides of it. But yeah, there's a line, right? Yeah. And I think my husband's yeah. really big on this. It's about not projecting yes. your stuff onto other people. Yeah, I um, think so too. And so I've actually, in a lot of my content, I, I'm doing a lot of I stuff. And yeah. this is my process and this is how I do it. Yeah. Because... People don't like being told what to do. No. And actually, it's really interesting. I've been doing a lot of work around this space, just because, and TikTok's made it better for me as well, is that people want, people will listen to things that help us change perspective and ideas if we start with the word I, or we have I in the first sentence. And so I'm also doing that a lot more in my video when I'm using it for authority building. Like I will say something like, I used to do such and such, and now I do this. And it's building authority and trust at the same time. And it's so different to here's three things that you can do to improve your business. And it's the same content. It's just starting with an I. Yeah, it's interesting because all mm. the marketing rhetoric is, yes. is you, right? Yes, exactly. But it's not not nearly as effective, you know. No. And I, I actually just did a vlog this morning that was about the fact that I had to reset myself because I left my wallet behind, ADHD, to get a coffee in the morning. <laughs> and I got to the cafe and I realized that I'd left it behind. So I did like a little series of videos and talked about how that would have thrown me off. You know, like there would have been a time when this would have thrown me off, but now it doesn't because we can reset at any point. And I think like that's like what it got quite a deep less, lesson in it. And it's so much better than here's how to reset yourself if you're having a bad day. Totally. Like, because totally you things. make it human. I think, yeah, I think when yeah. we say, oh, it's a humanness. And and you can you can tell your, your stories. I love your podcast on the micro stories. Like that's where the eye, I think, works really well with those. Yeah, they do. They work really well. Wow. You listen to my podcast. I listen to your podcast. Well, because, <laughs> okay, this is like I'm actually really enjoying this conversation. By the way, so it's to still transform and illuminate. I love that step process. Um, and when you were talking about that distilling, part of that is also identifying the bits that ChatGPT can't do, isn't it? It's finding all the things that that you can't steal from someone because it's their own voice, it's their nuances, it's their conversation. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's kind of uh, one of my clients, Haley. That I work with. One of the things that we put on her landing page was. She uses the phrase quite a lot, you know, don't make your business feel like a noose around your neck. And she says it all the time, but it wasn't on her website. And I'm like, if you say it all the time, 
Some people will not like that. Some people will find that that's really affronting. But your ideal clients will love it because it's working in sales meetings. And they'll get it, yeah. And they'll get it. And mm. I think that's that side, isn't it? That kind of confidence side of going, if you use your own language, you can't. Because I, because the thing is with ChatGPT that I feel like I'm always saying it. I said, use my own words and phrases. I've given them to you. Like I get quite grumpy with it. I'm like, you didn't do this. And then, oh, and then it goes, oh, sorry, you're right. Like I'll apologize. And then I'll rewrite like what I've asked it to write in the words and phrases like that I've got there. And then I'm like, okay, we're good now. Thank you. Thank you, Chad GPT. But it still likes putting other stuff in there, like rationalize. I'm like, I don't even use that don't word. Use it. Yeah. Ah. Um, so an ultimate. I don't use it. I've got all the I've realized I don't use any of the power words in my marketing. Which is great. I love that I don't yeah, use the power words in my awesome. marketing. Um well I, might, I mean there might be a couple that I use, but I, I don't like them because they feel so pushy to me and it's so not what I want and I could make a bigger business with them but I don't want to do I don't want to sell out and use power words just because I know that they work when I'd rather get a more, more authentic oh, and it's, a, it's that alignment right yeah it's I think like, so too it's how you want to show up in the world you, I'm not a power word in the world like. no I think that's <laughs> partly it like I'm like if I use those in my marketing but I never use them again with the person. How is it yeah. relating to that person? Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, okay. So tell me a little bit. So we had that horrific thing happen and then you went, oh my gosh, now I need to set things up. How have you changed or what is the pivot that has happened for you? Because you were do doing this, ju not just, but doing copywriting. Yeah. And now what is it that you're doing? Is it this three-step program? Yeah, it is. So what I realized through my three, I ran a, this co my copywriting agency for three years you know, clients would come to me or agencies would come to me with the predetermined strategy and I would just have to write the copy. And a lot of the time that strategy wasn't right. So I would produce a product that wouldn't get the results that I would want it to get. And there was that alignment issue. Yeah. And so, I mean, ChatGPT also landed and my clients are agencies they are rapid adopters of ChatGPT. They wanted lower prices. They wanted me to edit ChatGPT articles. So I was like, that's not what I want to be doing. And I, I, that's not fulfilling for me. And so I had this, I gave myself some space and some time to breathe over the last sort of four months. And I came up with this concept of the peaceful pipeline. I love the name of it. Thank you. And the peaceful pipeline isn't about pressing a button and automating your marketing and all the magic things happen. That's not what it's about. Damn it. it. No. <laughs> Sorry, well, I can't have... Sorry, Kat. We're just going to wind things up now. Uh, I don't think we're interested. Not, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it sounds lovely, but I would be it mis-selling does. it, right? Um, yeah. Thank you for not mis-selling it. No. The, the peaceful part is that exact process of knowing who you need to talk to. Yeah. Knowing the problem you solve for them understanding the transformation you make and how you stand out and then how you present that to the world. Yeah. When you know those things, you've got peace. Because yeah. if you don't have those things, you get incredibly frustrated because you don't know what to say. Yeah, I think that is so true. Actually, I, was, I, I see something similar. Not I love the peaceful pipe plan, by the way. But one of the things I've been saying a lot to my clients is that, you know, I have a, I have a client in particular who finds it very, very difficult to create her own content. And we've really worked a long time with this. And then she'll like, I'll keep on going back to, are you writing about the stuff you love? The stuff that you really, really, really want to be doing in your business? And she'll be like, oh, I forgot, I forgot. And then she'll suddenly create, she'll sit and she'll do like four emails or seven posts. And every single one of them is like a freaking work of art that makes me cry and well up you know, and makes me connect. And she'll send them out to people and she'll be like, these people are like sending these emails, like that is the best email I've ever read, you know. And and because when she's writing to her audience about the thing that she is energized by, the thing she really wants to be doing in her business, she's magic. When she's doing the stuff she feels that she should be doing from a marketing perspective, it doesn't work. Interesting. That's fascinating. But then you've done, it's your credit, you've You've helped her with the yeah. strategy and get well, to yeah, that place, Well, yeah, but I have place, to keep right? on reminding her. To, like, I think the thing is that, like, one of the things I've learned from being a strategist is I've, I've also changed my strat the way I do things. And I now work with people over six to eight weeks instead of with two sessions and to do the strategy. And I'm realizing that it takes three or four times of going through it to go, no, remember we said you just want to do this thing. And they keep on wanting to add other bits in because 
we do it and they go, that feels great. And then they go away and they freak out and go, hang on a minute, if I just do this thing and I don't do these things, how's my business going to be? And they add them in, like they add them back into the website and they add them back in and they can go, no, remember your goal. You only want, this is who you're talking to. This is what you want to do. This is what you really love. This is what you're excited about. This is all we need to talk about. And I think it's scary for small business owners. Do you think that? Do you think oh, it's scary? I think it's terrifying. I think it's, yeah. um, you know, I think a big one is this, the fear of, oh, but if I talk, if I put this message out to only this group of people, I'm going to lose business. And they need to know about all the things. And the key, the key thing in my mind with marketing is that you're not selling widgets. You're not selling a website. You're not selling social posts. You're selling a feeling. Yes. You're selling how someone feel. So if you can... You know, for example, if you are a... I like that, by the way. I'm just putting that in here. I'm just writing that down. I, I, I know it, but you said it really beautifully. So I'm just putting... You're selling a feeling. I like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, you know, like a, a coach who... A leadership coach who um, is te- helping a, a person, in a, a leader in a job who doesn't... Isn't getting the most out of their team. That leadership that leadership um, coaching purpose is selling empowerment. Like yeah. that's the feeling, yeah. right? So yeah, that's really important. Do you f- have you narrowed your own message by doing this as well? Like, because I I don't know about you, but I find it very easy to do for everybody else and very difficult to do for myself. And I see, I mentioned to you before we've recorded that I'm moving more into content strategy, which is why I'm launching a new podcast called The Content Confident Content. Everybody, it's coming Yay. out. Up. <laughs> um, so um, so you know, I'm I'm launching that because I know that that's the era I'm going in. But it's it's been a, a real. I can see why it's really hard for small business owners because you can be experiencing a modicum of ex, of ex, of success being broad. And narrowing makes it really powerful and makes it much easier to succeed. But it's a very scary thing to do. Did you find that process scary too? Terrifying. Yeah. Especially because I was pivoting niches. Yeah. So I yeah. jumped from agencies to yeah. consultants and service providers. It's a very different. It is um, a very different one. Very yeah. different niche. It is easier. It is they're, easier because there's heaps of them as well. Well, also agencies are what what are they're very high on the awareness scale. Yeah, and what that means is they know everything know. about everything about marketing. They don't need my one, two, three tips on copywriting, or you know, yeah. like. Um, so you have to when you when you've got those kinds of clients, you have to talk to you have to use story a lot more. Yeah, um, you're not doing the tactical stuff. It's really the emotional story stuff, um, and that's quite exhausting. Um, yeah. And can be quite difficult and challenging to come up with new stuff. So the pivot's been, it's been easier, but still challenging and still difficult to try. And, you know, it's always, and I talk about this with my clients, is that proximity. And even as like you and I, we're good writers, but I find it really difficult to step back and go, what is it that my client is struggling with that I can help them with? Really difficult. And I think that's the value that we bring is you can help them step back and go, this is the value that you bring. Talk about it. It's really important. Yeah, I've got a um, TikTok coach and um, I think it's really important. I, I used to be someone who, when they'd say, oh, it's really important for coaches to have their own coaches. And blah, blah, blah. But I agree. I really actually agree with that now. And I have a TikTok coach. And one of the reasons it's been really powerful to have him is that I I sometimes get too into what I'm doing and I can't see what the thing is I'm missing. And he'll just come in and go, this is the thing. And I'll be like, oh, damn it you're right that is it and I do think that you know it is so good to have an external influence I use my husband Rod quite a bit for this as well um or I use my clients I'll, you know, now I've got a lot I think that's also really useful as to going to your clients and say what why is it that this is a thing that you want to do with me what is it that's making a difference for you and I and I and I will say one of the things I'd say with this too is that because I'm now st- I've stepped into what I do and I really love it. These people are spontaneously telling me what it was and doing it publicly. And I think that has been a transform. Uh, you know, when we talk about transform, and I know that's part of what you say you're doing in the illumination. I really love the words transform and illuminate because this is a new experience for me. They're coming on to post and going, "You need to work with Rachel because," and then giving this list. And I'm going, "Okay, well, I didn't know I was doing those things. I'm just going to take you know, but like." I think this is the magic moment of when you go, oh, marketing, that that peaceful pipeline, which we're going to talk about a bit more now, when it starts to really work, your 
clients will start to create that pipeline for you as 100%. well. Absolutely. Yeah. Word of mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was super powerful. But when you've got yeah. the word of mouth layered within the, um, the attraction, you're yeah. not just relying on word of mouth. And I think for a lot of service providers and consultants, you know, they... It's word of mouth first, which is fantastic. Yeah, they do. And right? it's a good sign of a happy business. If you're it not is. getting referrals or word of mouth or repeat business, it's a, it's a sign that you have to fix your offer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so it's a peaceful pipeline because you um, know who you're talking to, you know what you're talking to them about, you know how to present it. So it's that peaceful. But how does it operate? Because I think one of the things I thought about when I saw what you're talking about is one of the things I liked, and I might have got it wrong, I hope I'm not getting it wrong live on a podcast, um, is you do something I really loved because you talked about the importance of using lead generation. Do you want to just break that down for us, what you what you normally recommend? I love LinkedIn, as a, yes. especially for consultants and service providers. So that is my number one lead generation um, strategy. And it's been really powerful for me. It's helped me build and grow my business. So that's why I like to use it because it's learned experience and, and I'm, I'm doing what I'm teaching. Obviously, there's the e- email marketing side of things, which um, is having having a good lead magnet or not having a lead magnet. I know there's a trend towards not, and that's absolutely fine. But giving oh, people, no, I'm 100 percent on the lead magnet side. Like, I honestly, I I have a bunch, and so much of our work comes from our lead magnets. It's not the lead magnet. It's actually the fact that that person wasn't quite ready to see who you were, and they need like another little nudge to see what your personality is like or how you talk to them. And they, that's what it's for. I don't think it's about the lead magnet being the most incredible. It has to be valuable, but I don't think it's about having the most incredible thing in the world that's so beautiful. And wow, it looks like it was designed by 50,000 Canva designers and it's incredible. <laughs> I don't think it's that. I think it's more just you get to add a little bit of trust and then keep in contact with them. And if you write the emails in a way that they feel like you're talking directly to them, they go, yeah, this is the person I need. Yeah, I totally agree. And you know, I, I don't think you're duping people by having a lead magnet. Then you know what you're signing up for. No, you know you're giving. I tell your email. people. Yeah, I, I say when you get this, you will be getting this this lead magnet, whatever it is, and six emails over the next twenty eight days. I physically say that on the contact form, like when they fill in. So I, I'm a very good, real believer in permission based marketing. So I'm like, you need to know that you'll be getting emails from me. Yeah, hundred percent. Be prepared. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I think I think that's incredibly powerful. Um, I mean, those, those two things would be probably my, the key lead gen strategies yeah. Um, yeah. and keeping it really simple. So you don't, you know, like for me, I, I just, I am, I am on LinkedIn at the moment and that, that is it. I don't dive, I, I, I dabbled with Instagram, but mm. I'm happy. It's LinkedIn's oh. my happy place. <laughs> yeah. But LinkedIn's my happy place too. And I use the content on there. I repurpose it into the other areas. So that's good. And, and TikTok's my happy place too. I think you'd be great on TikTok. I know you're an introvert, oh, but I think you'd be great. <laughs> um, but Lynch, you do very well on TikTok. But I I, um, I want to ask you just about that LinkedIn. When you say that you're using LinkedIn as your lead generation, are you, do you just mean you're doing posts? No. Or are you doing something more actively than that? I'm doing much more actively. So I've got I've got quite a small audience, but... And I am not, you know, some people go to super side of stardom on the platform. I am oh, not, I'm not that I, person. I, like, yeah, I just, but also like, so there's people that are doing super stardom who are often they're LinkedIn coaches because that's like, you, if you get super stardom on a platform, it's normally because like on Instagram, they're Instagram coaches, on TikTok, they're TikTok coaches, on LinkedIn, they're LinkedIn coaches. If you're not in that vibe, it's unusual for you to be a superstar. Yeah, because it's kind of like LinkedIn or any of the platforms like it. If you're basically talking about how to make their platform usable, yeah. they're going to help push you out. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's MLM. Yeah, yeah, LinkedIn. yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Sorry yeah. all these people. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're not a superstar, but what are you doing? Because I see your posts are really good. You get good engagement on them, but you're doing more than that. I do a lot, a hell okay. of a lot behind the scenes. So tell me what you do. So the two things that yeah, the, and I started actually outreach. I've been okay. outreaching for a long time and oh. I don't do it in a spammy way. So I've I've tested all the things with outreach. I've even used an automated platform, which is a big no-no, but there are safe say, ones. What? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I was testing. Yeah. I've tested a lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, I like a, the you yeah. test because I test as well. Yeah. I love testing. I tested it for about a month and um, it was 
terrible because it burns through all of your leads and you you have done it's, any I call option. it the dick pick of marketing. It's terrible. It's really bad. <laughs> it's it like, is. you know, eventually you're going to get a hit with a dick pic yeah, on, a, on a dating site. But, yeah. but you're going to burn through 180 people before you get through and that. And it's not you know. cool. Yeah. No, so it's I, not. And it feels like it feels like a little bit inappropriate. Yeah. It is really inappropriate. And the yeah. messages were quite, there's only so much you can just do with an automated message. And so I felt kind of like doing it, but I was just like, okay, you know, it's we'll test it out. And, yeah. and it is a valid strategy. People use it and, you know. It's, and they do see success, but it wasn't for me. So my outreach now is very, um, it's incredibly intentional. Okay. And I will literally go, I use Sales Navigator. I pay for a premium subscription and I search for clients within my audience and I follow them. If they're, I, but typically they need to be active on LinkedIn to some extent. Yeah. Otherwise so this is a really hard. key part of it, right? Because if they're not active on LinkedIn, for a start, they're not going to read your post. So they're not going to build that trust relationship. Yeah. And they also don't understand the power of LinkedIn, which is like, so I think like for you, because LinkedIn is going to be one of your cool tools that you're, you're going to be helping people grow and improve. If they don't understand the power of it already, it's going to make it really tricky, isn't it? Oh, very much. So um, so I try and look, for, and, and LinkedIn Sales Navigator is quite good at letting you know if people have been active, which helps yes. the, the filtering um, because it can be quite a, um, it's quite a, it takes time. It's a time consuming process. So you use Sales Navigator, you use it to find your audience and then you make sure that they're connected to you and that they're in, in active, active because that's really important because you're not trying to convert, change their minds, yeah? And how do you know they're active? So if you go into Sales Navigator, it can it actually tells you that they have posted on LinkedIn. Because I have the I have the premium, but not Sales Nav- Navigator. Yeah, no. So uh, oh, really? Okay. So if you get yeah. Sales Navigator, um, it actually tells you if they've posted, and that gives you a clue. You can go in and just see how active they are. Oh, cool! I like that. Yeah, it's really good. And then um, I reach out to them. I, I like their posts. I comment on a post, and then I reach out to them and say, "Hey, um, I really love that post that you did." Ex- about X, Y, and Z, it would be great to connect. And I get an 80, 80 to ninety percent strike rate. Okay, wow, that's amazing. So you, so you're asking them to connect. Yeah. Because and that's what I will often do. Like if I'm connecting with someone, it's normally because I've talked to them in a comment or a post, and then I go, I'm going to connect with you now. Like I connected with someone this morning because we were both in a conversation about weight loss surgery and having ADHD. And she immediately connected with me and I was like, ideal. And then I went up to the profile and went, ideal, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> so, so that kind of thing, you're kind of, you're, you're using a bit of um, proactiveness, but it's still very organic because you're, connect- you're not going and messaging them and saying, hey there, my name is Kat Corbett and I am a messaging specialist who can help you turn your business around. No, and I've done that okay. too. I have done okay. that. I've tested that too. And um, that strategy is interesting because yeah. I got quite a few clients off that strategy because people who are in the market ready to go now will be like, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah. But it alienate the yeah. 97% of the audience who aren't ready to go now, who would yeah. be better off as valued connections, seeing your content and being nurtured over time. So that's the strategy I'm I employ. I call this the sticky web strategy. That's so a good I love strategy. that you do this. I yeah. say basically you get them on the web. Yeah. And then you basically create content that makes them stick around. That's right. And they, we allow them to take their time to come to us. Yes, 100%. That's the peaceful pipeline part. That is the peaceful pipeline part, exactly. Can I ask you a question? Are you doing specific call to action sales promotional uh, posts to make sure that you get the ones that are ready? Are you doing that yet? I did one when I launched because I yeah, wanted to explain not what I was doing, but I yeah. haven't done it explicitly. And I'm kind of, I'm, I'm getting, I will do because I think I've built up enough equity around it for the last months that I've been marketing, but I really just don't want to be too salesy just yet, but I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to like, okay. I'm, can I talk to you about this for a second? Yes. I'm going to give you some coaching because okay. I'm going to tell you what I tell my coaching clients. How often do you post on LinkedIn? Three times a week. Okay. So if you're three times a week, that means that I say three times a week means once a fortnight yeah. you have a promo day and it's a clear call to action. Yeah. And what I recommend you do, which I recommend all my clients do, is I recommend you write five to six extremely good promotional posts and you literally just rotate them so you just and you can you can use you can use a scheduler if you want to or you can have them but you just rotate them around and around because the people that are quite close will come back to it Mm. and go oh yeah now I'm ready Mm. so they recognize it but it also takes that emotional pressure off because you sit down and write them really really well and then they are there and I use it now across all my platforms and that one change has been the change that's allowing me to get regular clients up up without having to do a lot more other stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, that's and, and really it's worked good with tip. all my clients. Mm. And 
it's because we're selling every time, but we need to make sure that we have that that one in there. It's kind of like what you've got with those posts who are asking you to connect. You're capturing those ones that are right on the decision door, ready today. So once a fortnight, that frequency will be enough to catch it, catch them. Yes. Yes. But you have to have them there because that's that stickiest part of the web that yeah, we want to get. Totally. Sorry. That's Sorry, awesome. I know you're an expert, no. but I, I know that you're also new to this thing. Yeah. And that's what I would say to you if you were my coaching client. Yeah, thank you. That's amazing. That's really good advice. Um and having, I think, those five canned posts, yes. especially around the sales message, because otherwise you go, yes. oh, because they're the, they're the hardest messages to write. They are. And yeah. so I, I think you write them like all, like I've got mine and I've done mine as carousel posts. Um, actually haven't been putting them on post, uh, LinkedIn because they've just changed the thing with Metricon. I've been getting someone else to do it. But um, I'm going to have, I, I've been doing them on LinkedIn like that and people are buying from them and I'm going to use them now on LinkedIn. Awesome. And so, and I have, I have five. Um, and they are pretty detailed and nice. I have all my pricing on them and oh, it's working. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, amazing with yeah. the pricing. So I highly recommend. Cool. Thank you. Now that's really good to know. Okay. So you're using it as, and so you're getting people that are interested and are they then communicating with you? Are they coming and messaging you and going, I really like that? Or are you taking interest from them commenting on your post and then you private messaging them if you were going to take it further with yes, your Facebook Yes, I do pipeline. both. So yeah. um, if anyone that comments on any of my posts or likes them that and we're not connected, I connect with them. Um, yeah, that's if, good. Sometimes the conversation starts and we can have a chat and they're interested in the Peaceful Pipeline. It's, it's my unique process. And Yeah, if, I if, love it. I love you. the name. Thank you. And I think it's it, awesome. Oh, thanks. And it creates it, yeah. int- it creates curiosity. And so often people just say, tell me about the Peaceful Pipeline. Or another guy said, that I was going to abbreviate it. But and he thought that was funny. It was like pee pee. So the pee pee. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you a question about that? Do you think that because you're introverted, you've actually made something that appeals to more introverts? I think I have. So you're actually like when we think about narrowing that arrow, often like the words we use can narrow because I, I have a bugbear with the whole niching thing mm. that people often go, oh, my niche is introvert service providers who want to grow their business on LinkedIn. And then they go, hi, I work with I work with um, introverted business owners, service-based business owners who want to grow their presence in Pinglet. And we've missed the point entirely. If we name it the Peaceful Pipeline, we're automatically narrowing that arrow down to I want to work mainly with people that are kind of like me. That's exactly right. People who have a lot to offer the world, but just there's... That's a that's a bit of a struggle. And it's more powerful doing it that way than saying, hi, I work with introverted service Well, owners. because I get people who aren't introverted. One of my clients yeah, exactly. now is incredibly extroverted. She's extraordinary. Um, yeah. And she's a powerhouse. And she, you know, she's not at all. But the peaceful also speaks to the transformation that you get, yeah. right? Yeah. So it does a few things. Um, yeah, it's a chill. It's a chilling, like chill out about it. It's, it's a bit of work. a chill vibe. Yeah, yeah that's chill vibe. Right. Yeah, yeah. And extroverts need to chill. <laughs> and then the third thing I do actually um, on my LinkedIn strategy for, you know, growing the audience is just engaging. Like I just go hard and I do it, especially with our local audience in New Zealand. We've got an amazing LinkedIn we community. We do. So great. I love it. Yeah. And just by doing that and getting getting in with everyone, it's just such a supportive community. And it, it is, just helps everything. It? Yeah. I, I love, love it. it. I, I love also it. love it. I do. I have hidden people. I I've worked out that I can curate my 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 feed, and I used to be against sex. I'd be like, "Oh, you shouldn't like narrow your thinking." But I have like, if I get someone where I go, "Okay, they're in my industry, but they're constantly posting things that don't fit with my values." Um, that doesn't mean the values are wrong; they're just different to mine. I yeah. just unfollow those people now, yeah. so I have people that kind of are really aligned with how I do things or how I think, and I think that has been quite an a big thing for me. Mm. Um, can I ask you another question? And I'm sorry, it's quite a nosy question. <laughs> you can say piss off you can say that I won't mind um but did you change your pricing model significantly when you did this too because I would say that your value has gone up exponentially by doing this as opposed and not that copywriting isn't high value but it's a different type of model isn't it it is a hundred percent a different kind of model and the copywriting was in my view and in my experience has been commoditized yeah, it's transactional, it right? Is it's like per hour or per words or whatever it is. So I've yeah. never done per hour or per word. I've always done by yeah. project. So I've yeah. had, I had a, a list and everything had a cost, right? But, oh, man, getting money out of people, what a nightmare. Like months. I, you know, I have a two-week payment term and months would pass and no money. So this way I have, I charge up front. I've got a, it's an eight-week process that we go through and it's, you know, it's 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 good. Like if 
it's good money. It's it's not exorbitant because I'm still validating and I'm still testing and I want my clients to get good results. I think one of the things I've really learned is me being more open about my pricing is I feel really relaxed now asking other people why they price things. And my pricing, part of the reason my pricing changed was I had, I've got a really great relationship with an amazing coach and she was talking about how she'd made a mistake with her different levels of what she offered. Oh. And I went, oh God, that's that's what I've done. And, and it and it transformed everything. And so I think women, particularly in business, we just need to get better at talking about what we're actually pricing with each other and trust that. Totally. Because I think it's really good. And I yeah. want, you know, so we'll do anyway, I'll separate that. But yeah, I agree with you. So that's eight weeks and the pain front was just great. But you did change your pricing model. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and I changed the um the terms obviously as well. But it was it was definitely a change in the pricing. Well, yeah, it was a change in the pricing model. I mean, I've always charged per projects, so I've never done by the hour. So it, it's it's not really a model change, but it's just a, it has to be structurally different because it's a different. Yeah, but it's also I think you know like when we're doing writing, we're doing something I call it you know done for you work, and I put that at the bottom of the level, and you're doing done with you because you're not doing because you're not doing you do I coach, you're actually doing what you done with you or you're working together. So that's another layer up, and yes. that's more expensive. That yes. can be two to three times more expensive. So I think, and that's really good because you're modeling that too to your service provider clients and checking in with that because that's another big mistake that service providers often do is they put everything at the same level. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. So what's what's the future for you with this? Like, do you feel like this is your thing, the peaceful pipeline? I do really. I feel like, oh, I mean, I've been, I jump around a lot. My whole career has been very freelance and the word free yeah, no, is like that too. Has, yeah, like freedom is good. Yeah. yeah. And so I feel though I've landed in a really good place that aligns with all the experience that I've had over 20 years of marketing, advertising, PR. Um, and I feel like it, it aligns with me as who yeah. I am. I think and it fits really well with you. Thank you. Yeah. Not that I know you yeah. really, really well, but I think it just fits with everything that you've said and done before. Thanks. I don't feel like it's like it's a too much of a deviation. It's just a refinement. I'm really only taking two clients at a time at the moment yep. just to make sure that my clients are getting the absolute best out of me because it yeah. is done with you. I do invest heavily. I, I yeah. write posts. I do competitor analysis. Wow. I do a lot of stuff. And so I just want to make sure that every client that comes through is having the best experience. Because they'll be powerful tools for you as well. That's right. And yeah. So can I ask a question um, going back because um, I'm deeply curious about this. So I, I do the messaging thing as well on LinkedIn and I actually don't get a lot of leads. I'll be really honest. You know, I've got probably 8,000 followers. I have good engagement. I get people that are cold, maybe coming to that profile and interacting with me and then making and making a jump and, and asking me to work with them. But I don't I don't get massive ones. And I know that I'm not messaging a lot privately, which I think is part of it. But do you lead it into a sales call when you're messaging or do you wait for the person to come to you and then you feed off that? Are, are are you still being more being more proactive than a lot of other people would be around going, hey, did you want to make a time or something like that? Do you do that? At the moment, no. So what mm. I'm doing is I'm building my pool. And then yeah. if I come up with, like I'm planning to do a workshop that is highly yep. relevant, I'll go yes. to them and say, hey, you're loving, loving being connected, loving your content. If you're interested, I've got this. Let me know and I'll give you the link. I think I might. I think that's a really good way of doing it, actually. And I think um, I think I need to get better at actually seeing who's actually in. Because I've now got too many followers, I think, and lots of ways mm -hmm. to know who that is and sifting through it. Yeah. I think if I sat down and made a list and yeah. I go, that's my go-to list, that would actually be a really good idea. Yeah. And so Sales Navigate is nice because it actually can tell you who's engaged with you off your outreach. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm gonna. I think I'm just gonna have to go to sales network. Yeah, I, I, it's like I, it's not even like we really need it, but I also feel like I'm missing a trick on something that I could also be having my clients with. And I feel too that I like seeing that stuff because it's so easy to miss it. It is easy, and and the thing is, it's quite hard. People don't like doing yeah. it. There's a real um, tension there. But if you yeah, but I found doing it in an authentic way makes it easier. Oh, I think I, um, I'm i a big believer in that. And it's not like you're saying to them, buy my stuff. You're saying, hey, build some more trust with me. Yeah, that's right. Which is really powerful. Yeah. Mm. Cool. I, I This has been such a pleasure. I've really enjoyed this. And I can't wait to have you on Confident and go really deep on one of these things because I... 
I, I, you're just amazing. I would oh, thank you. 100% think LinkedIn is very relevant to who you are and people would be very lick with you. Oh, likewise, it's Rachel. Awesome. Like, I think, you it's know, been we, awesome. we're geeking out together. It's awesome. I know. I would love <laughs> this. has been a complete geek fest for me. I've been so happy. Sometimes I have a guest. I won't tell anyone who it is. And I'm like, okay, what about this thing? Like, trying to, and they're like, oh, no, no, And I'm like, oh, this has been so pleasurable. The whole thing has been pleasurable. So awesome. Thank you. Thank um, you. So, yeah, if people want to get hold of you, how do they do it? Well, the best thing is probably um, peacefulpipeline.com. Oh, nice. I, you got a dot com. I got a dot com. Um, so you can go and you, you can connect with me on LinkedIn there, but peacefulpipeline.com is the easiest to remember. So do that. And, and it was obviously more... meant to be if you could find the dot com. Because it's know. pretty tricky. I know. It's crazy tricky. Yeah. So That's um, amazing. And so when you're saying dot com, is that because you're thinking you're going to take this beyond New Zealand? I'd, hope, I'd like to think so. You know, yeah. It's a global world. It's a big world. I think it's and, a global world. Yeah. I think it's just the beginnings and I can't wait to see what it's going to be like in a year or two years time. Oh, I'm really excited. I just, yeah. Thank you. Once everything else is settled down, you know. Yeah. I know, when I get a new home. <laughs> when you get a new home, although the home you've got in the background there, the window beside behind looks absolutely amazing. It's so. lovely. We're in this really sweet little A-frame and it's gorgeous, all six of us. It's two bedroom, but beautiful <laughs> and perfect. And we're so lucky. We're really, yeah. honestly, like, we're just, we're so lucky to be where we are and not under and a pile of rubble. And how's the Steffi? Oh, okay? Yeah, she's fine. We've got two. Oh, you've got two Steffies like us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're like cats, but bigger. And a bit crazier. Like, yeah, we've got a quiet one and a, and a loud one. And I, one of my clients is actually a dog trainer. And she, I know she knows that my dogs are incorrigibly behaved. And I and I know that. But I also know that they're staffies. And they, you know, like he's like, he is like Spud is my lump of lard. And he comes and lies Aww. on my lap every night and snuggles up. And he climbs yeah. right up and like gets in there and like snuggles in and then if I try to move he's like yeah. <laughs> no. I've got a grumpy one as well he is yeah. so grumpy yeah. and if I'm away for that like well, I've had too many long days at work he's just like on Saturdays like uh, he'll be like you are not moving off the couch like do not drink any liquids I am here and I'll have to try and move him and Bye. when he goes to bed like I just there's something about them that they're, they're terrible in so many ways but yeah. oh my gosh the love that those dogs give us no matter what's they're happening amazing. they're I great know. healers they are they're incredible healers yeah and they've yeah. been massive for us like and it was we we're really lucky we, they could stay with us in our rental yeah I know so lucky yeah. so we really yeah, wouldn't have yeah I oh, know it's been a huge pleasure thank you so much for thank being you Rachel it's, been, it's been awesome I've loved it me too Kat was just so good to talk to I found it really hard to end this podcast because I wanted to talk to her all day now before we jump in to you taking action from this I want to let you know that I've got a new podcast coming out It launches the 18th of August and you can go and have a look and register your interest to have the first in the know first episodes coming out and listen to the trailer at competentcontentpodcast.com. Go and have a look, check it out and find out what it's all about. I'm super excited about it and it launches on 18th of August. Of course, as always, come along to our group Muppet Marketing on Facebook if you'd like to ask questions from today or just hang out with a whole bunch of other small business owners. And remember, if you are someone that's struggling to get contact with other people and using uh, frameworks like LinkedIn, platforms like LinkedIn, remember that building relationships is the single best way that we can do that and social media allows us to do that en masse. But sometimes it's also really powerful to get that individual message and relationship being built up. You never know the people you're talking to today might become your clients tomorrow. I hope you have a great week. Next week, it's all me helping you with how to close sales the sales closes that you need in your life because i'm all about helping you get more sales from your business see you then if you love what you heard today be sure to hit subscribe and if you love this episode in particular i'd love it if you shared it on social media remember to tag me in so i can say thank you have a great week and we'll talk soon